Hello, I'm Dr. Boris Malugin. The video you are about to watch is called Iris Reconstructive Surgery, producer Jiri Sandeling from Prague. The authors of the video design a model of the anterior segment of the eye with the goal to teach various iris reconstruction techniques. The scale of that model is 10 to 1, that makes it very easy for the trainee to master techniques and acquire appropriate skills. Authors show partial iris defect reconstruction with mechanical and sipsa sliding knot sutures, restoring traumatic medriasis and iris dialysis, and finally, the principle of artificial iris implants. I found this video very useful and educational, and I'm sure you will enjoy it too. Surgical procedures involving iris should be part of basic skills for cataract surgeon. We can find plenty of modifications to iris reconstruction in literature. However, the diagrams are often unclear and videos from these surgeries obscure. We created a 3D model of ocular anterior segment to demonstrate model examples of surgical techniques dealing with iris reconstruction. This model serves in planning the procedures and in presenting them to patients. Scale of the model is 10 to 1. For better visualization, some parameters are altered, for example, sagittal height of cornea. Among the basic methods used in iridoplasty are McKennels and Sipser suture. The needle passes cornea near limbus and the suture is tied after both fibers are passed through one incision above the iris defect. We usually use long, gently curved needles that allow easy manipulation. The seeps or sliding knot probably causes least traumatization to the iris. We facilitate passing the needle out of the anterior chamber by inserting the tip of the needle into a blunt cannula. The most suitable needle to suture the iris is one with cone tip that divides the tissue rather than needles with sharply penetrating tips and sharp edges that may cause larger defects in the tissue. Unfortunately, purely cone tips have only small needles suitable for intraocular manipulation. For intraocular suturing, it is necessary to use high quality visco material and fine reliable instruments. The most simple solution to the iridodialysis is a suture pass through the sclera under the conjunctiva. The knot has to be buried. A larger iridodialysis can be adapted either with multiple single interrupted sutures or with a sewing machine technique. The fiber is passed through hypodermic needle by which we then suture the root of the iris repeatedly. We externalize the loops of the suture into the sclera groove where the single knot is buried. We need to be careful not to retract the externalized loops back into the eye during the procedure. A white pupil can be narrowed with simple interrupted sutures. 
This is suitable in partial defects or in irregularities in the tone of the iris. If the iris tissue appears homogeneous, we can use circular suture, also known as pupil cerclage. Placing the sutures too peripherally, or if the iris is too atrophic, combined with incautious manipulation with needle with sharp edges, can lead to stretching out tips of the iris, so this has insignificant functional or cosmetic effect. More extensive partial defects of iris with loss of tissue can be managed with aniridia rings that can be implanted either into the capsular bag or in sulcus. In this patient we decided to implant the most simple and the most thin system inside the capsule as the lens was partially lodged inside the wound. Due to this, it was necessary to perform partial suture of iridodialysis. Patients should be prepared that these colored iris diaphragms often have brighter shades than would appear in catalogues. Still, our patient is satisfied not only with functional, but with cosmetic effect as well. Excellent cosmetic effect in defects with significant loss of iris tissue or in aniridia provide custom colored flexible iris prosthesis. They are composed of silicone alternatively with a mesh for sclera fixation. There are also flexible prostheses composed of hydrogel. Here we can see intracapsular implantation. There are implants for intracapsular implantation available that can be combined to form a 360 degrees diaphragm. In aphakia, without any usable residual lens capsule, can serve as a good solution rigid intraocular lenses combined with diaphragm substituting iris. Oftec offers an iridia intraocular lenses in three colors. They have smaller diaphragm diameter, therefore they are more suitable in partially preserved iris margin. For similar cases, Mortar offers lenses with variable diameters of black diaphragm but we should always consider implanting a standard intraocular lens and suturing the iris. Atrophic and fibrotic iris tissue with several iridodialysis led to decision to implant intraocular lens with wider diaphragm and smallest available diameter of the optic 3 mm. Placing the lens is often obstructed by posterior synechia fibrotic capsular and other residues. Problematic cosmetic effect is more than compensated for significant functional improvement. We have to consider every new case individually and consult any decision with the patient as the final result may differ from patient's expectations.